Let's come together and all right That's when you remember who you are Over here tomorrow when we're all right That's when we forget just who you are Make us come together and all right That's when you remember who you are
Welcome one and all to another amazing night here in Tranquility. We absolutely are in for a treat of a match here tonight, no question about it. That's a grenade from Pompu eliminate everybody on the field! Now I'm just something as well is gonna be applied Ooh. as a death ball film and it's gonna be huge oh fighting three! The double kill with the Bastion OT? Alright, I see you guys! For b -Well, look to find a stick there, find the stick, they find it! With it. <laughs> Those who find the picks will save the fights, and they don't really need to save what they've already won! And Cam with the four-man punch off the map! Experience Tranquility. Welcome one and all to Tranquility Gaming Season 11 Transcendence Tier Coverage. My name is Balzi. I'm joined here by Denji on the cast. And what better way to start a brand new season than with the tale of that has gone through the multiple seasons of the same name. It's Amnesia versus MI7 here, Denji. And it's time for one heck of a matchup that we've seen countless times over and over again. Yeah. MI7, they've... And Amnesia, Amnesia not, hasn't had a pass with MI7 in general. It's just the uh, Nostalgia Oregon general with Reminiscence taking down MI7 two seasons in a row in the Grand Finals. Now, MI7, they have been snake bitten against this org, but they have moved up to the Transcendence tier. They took some of their old play, they took some of their players from their uh, Discord tier roster with them, being Bunny, Lore, uh, and Haydenator. I believe were the three that moved up from Discord tier. I think those are the only three that were returning off the top of my head, unless. Uh, Tanic is still there. Yeah, Tanic is still there, so he's moving up too. 
Yeah, definitely. There is a history that has to be noticed here in this matchup. Obviously, Amnesia has been a transcendence tier for a long time, but their opponents, MI7, come up from the Discord tier last season where they finished runner-up to one of their most greatest rivals, which was Reminiscence. Reminiscence is the sister team of Amnesia, and MI7 happened to play Reminiscence six times in the past two seasons, and so far that record between MI7 and Reminiscence is tied 3-3. Three to three. Now, while Reminiscence may no longer be in Tranquility as they have unfortunately retired the team branding amnesia is still in tranquility here so mi7 might try to continue their rivalry against the nostalgia org here in the transcendence tier and try to put themselves in advantage here trying to get that win and bring them up to four to three versus the nostalgia org yeah and they did make a great pickup mi7 did make a great pair they uh, matched it with blind score who had a really really insane performance taking mi7 to all the way to map seven in the semis when he on the Wild Cat Boys last season. So MI7, seeing how great Gliscor was against them, decided, hey, let's uh, take this guy. And they also picked up another support player named Grizzly. I do not really know that much about him, but they have three supports. However, Bunny is uh, currently absent to this match, so they will have a uh, Monarch ringing in her place. I believe Am I believe uh, Amnesia's entire roster will be here tonight. So uh, Amnesia only a five-man roster. Uh, they no subs. No substitutions whatsoever on their side. They have uh, some of the players from past seasons. They have a uh, Noct who they have Noct who played on uh, Reminiscence last season, I believe. Um, actually, I think Noct is the only team player that's played in the past in Nostalgia. Unless Matt's wait, no, Matt's and Brian were from Mar Marsupial Rocket played on MI7 in their first <laughs> in the first iteration. And Dawes is a player I do not recognize, but he is their tank. Yeah, people who recognize Bad Touch of Mario League will recognize the name Zaws, a member of one of the teams over there on VPL. But regardless, the door's opening here as Amnesia and MI7 come out of the doors here. Matson running out on the Sojourn, just trying to pump in damage to the rest of the team as the 2 is going to meet right here in the center of Icebreaker. Right now, it's MI7 on the Orissa composition, which has been pop popping up in popularity recently. Meanwhile, Amnesia willing to run that Ramatra composition. Zaws going to be using that Annihilation, using that uh, Nemesis form. Very fast here, trying to punch into the enemy team of MI7, but so far, the sustainability of MI7, keeping them alive for the most part. Tandy P goes in the sideline, does get that concussive blast mine onto Matson. so now an advantage here for the side of MI7 is to try to get some put more pick. Knocks out of the picture, but Amnesia will cap the point first, but MI7 currently looking like they're gonna take this point back for their own. Yeah, both teams are just uh, trying to take the control around the main where both teams meet, but Tandy decides to flank on the low ground around the point and picks off, um, Matson with the grenade concussion mine combo. Now, Arissa, like you said, has been rising a little more this season, this season, and that's because she did receive a, some buffs. She received her a buff to her fortify, where Hello. I think it stacks a little more once your armor is okay. gone. But and it also, it, Arissa's also Chris recently has been a lot better against Ramatra because her spear you can always just spear his nem form back. He that's the, his main engagement tool. He's really not that good against the rest of the Omni form. So Teresa brawls better, and as Glyscore immediately picks off Madsen with the spear to the face. Definitely Glyscore getting that early pick off, and now MI7 taking every single angle to pick around. The window for Monarch there is a cherry on top as the team kill goes in favor of MI7. We must down. Yeah, and, uh, this team, Amnesia, I, they, they look like they're just gonna stick because Dodge is getting close to that annihilation. Brian's getting closer to that blizzard. They have the window, so really they're kind of trying to take an ultimate fight here. But Tanakhi unleashes the tire very early, and Arya and Misha is already starting to retreat. Going right back to the spawner and trying to avoid the tire. Panicky, however, is able to find Noct in the back line here. So, Amnesia down their speed boost. Not looking good so far for them. 68% here for MI7. And Amnesia's just going to wait for Noct to get back into the fight as the Lucio starts running back toward the point. Noct, of course, part of that Reminiscence roster that won the championship last season beating MI7. So we'll see how Amnesia are going to be able to use Noct to their advantages. Here they come with the window coming out from Rocket. Brian able to get that headshot onto Tanik And now Monarch out of the fight as well here. MI7 starting to crumble a little bit with Lore, however, getting picks one by one. Both DPS dead here for the side of Amnesia. However, Amnesia still putting on the pressure here. Dawes gets rid of Gliscor and with Grizzly out of the fight, it's going to be a point flip here for Amnesia. 97% though for Amnesia on the board. Yeah, you're in Discord here. Lore was seen as like the main threat and he nearly turns that fight by himself if Gliscor was able to live for a little bit longer he had the uh, Terracer too although he probably would have died using it but 
Now they got that tool to re-engage, but the problem is Amnesia have Blizzard beat and Annihilation. Now, Annihilation isn't a big deal to deal with since Glyscore can always just spear backwards as he does immediately. But yeah, Blizzard's gonna come up here from Ryan. I don't think it catches anybody actually. Yeah, Blizzard doesn't look like he gets anybody. B comes out here from Knock. Glyscore just holding on to that Terrasaur trying to get anything, but unfortunately will be met with an icicle to the face, so. Not a good start here for my 7 Tannic is able to equalize, get that kill into Nock, but Matson landing the Railgun shot into the Junkrat. Means that Amnesia gonna be able to hold here for a bit. It looks like MI7 gonna have to retreat and set up for the next fight. Yeah, even though the, the spear back of the Annihilation, the Blizzard misses, but the wall um, from Brian cut off the entirety of the team from Glyscore, so Glyscore had no support as he held that Terrazer, and the entirety of Amnesia was able just to burn through that Fortify, that Overhealth, and all that armor. Now Lore. Initiating the engage here for MI7 with that Dragon Strike. Does force up the immortality field here from Rocket, but Dawes punches Glyscore into oblivion here. Rocket takes care of their adversary on the Baptiste. However, MI7 still trying to stay in this. Tanvi and Grizzly find a pair of picks for their own. And now with Brian out of the fight, courtesy of an arrow to the head of Lore. Looks like MI7 just trying to bring themselves into the advantage here. Dawes in the Nemesis form, just trying to punch out Lore, but will end up getting burnt down by Glyscore, who comes back on the Wrecking Ball. At the point, looks like he's going to flip over here. Doc will be there for the touch, but 99% here for MI7. Overtime now triggered. Amnesia trying to come back in this fight and try to turn it around. Matson on the Somber trying to hack out Laura, but only finds that single pick. Meanwhile, three teammates stand here for the side of Amnesia, and MI7 cleaning up the point. They'll take the first point here on Icebreaker. Yeah, that was extremely close, but it looked like it was going to go Amnesia's way with Amnesia finding a first couple early picks immediately onto Glasgow and Monarch. But the problem is they're not looking really at the main threat, which is Lore. Lore every time Lore has kind of been left alone. Lore was pretty much left alone for the entirety of that map and able to get pick after pick. Uh Tannic Thee is also just causing chaos on the junkrat as a junkrat's also will, because they can displace uh so many players with the concussion wise, so much spam damage comes through. Uh Am Amnesia were so focused on trying to kill the backline in Glasgow that they just kinda let Tannic Thee and Lore run rampant that entire point. Absolutely. Lore, of course, the best hits game winner in Discord tier last season, considered one of the best players to ever hit the Discord tier. In fact, was the MVP last season as well. So, we'll have to see if MDs are willing to deal with the actual threat here. They're coming out with a dive composition this time, something we don't see as much, considering with the recent changes to Orisa. Nonetheless, Dawes, Matson, and Brian running out on the Winston Echo and and Tracer here. But meanwhile, MI7 just pushing onto the back line of Knox and Rocket, who don't have that much mobility to keep themselves alive, but so far, no blood really exchanged. Or looking for the perfect shot. Might have gotten a little bit of a lag spike there, just trying to set up for that perfect shot. But Rocket able to equalize here, gets that kill on a Tanaki, but Nox ends up dying to the steel trap, so now you're down one of your supports here for the side of Amnesia, but it might not matter. Monarch now out of the fight here for MI7. Dawes is trying to set up for the perfect dive. We'll get some help from Brian to get rid of Laura, and now Amnesia cleaning up this point. Glyscore going for the quick retreat here as Amnesia takes the point. Yeah, and even though dive doesn't really seem to work in, in theory against Arissa, it can once if you can get the Arissa away from her team and they aren't grouped up together, then the dive can initiate because MI7 really wasn't running a counter any like counter dive uh, uh, DPS or supports. The only thing that can really protect against it was Glasgow or Spirit like the monkey in on that Arissa, but he dropped and as soon as he dropped, um, Dawes just took advantage of that and immediately took out Gri Grizzly and. Lore, but now they switch. Come, they only have switched their come completely over to try to like just deal with Dawes. They do deal with Dawes, but they trade Monarch for it. Yeah, Monarch out of the fight, so now you only have those Lucio heals for MI7. Batson switches over to the Diva Duplicate, trying to burn down Glyscore, who has been one health for way too long, considering that they are playing Diva right now. Danik be over to this Reaper, trying to burn down that Winston as they aggress in, but it's just going to meet a face full of Pulse Rifle. Oh. Ryan able to get that Pulse Bump kill on the Grizzly as well on the way out as Amnesia. Still continuing this hold, and with Glyscore getting d mac MI7 are going to have a rough time re-engaging. Yeah, and also Nocta switched over to that Life Weaver off of the Brigade, annoying that there's like not really going to be a dive threat coming through. His best bet is like to play that Life Weaver and just have Dawes play more aggressive so he can uh, use the Life Grip ability to get him out of there. And Life Weaver did receive a couple of different buffs in the season. His health got changed, his Tree of Life got changed, his Life Grip got a little bit of a change too. But as uh, Lore just gets caught out of position in Narnia for some reason, he's way over or there from his away from his team. Yeah, Lore was looking for any sort of pick onto Rocket here. Is now Dawes 
Finding two so far in this fight, uses the Primal Rage. Monarch gets finished out by Brian, courtesy of Dawes' support right now, but Amnesia right now, 83%. They're looking in comfortable position to try and take this map for their own, or this point for their own. Yeah, the problem that my seven's having is they're getting split up by whatever. Laura's trying to go for like a hero pick or something, and the rest of the team's just like stuck in main. You have to play together as, oh, that's a good start. Tannic team manages to pick off Methan in before and initiate overtime and they do have a lot of ultimates coming oh. in but lore and tannic the overlap that might come back to bite them yeah both these assaults overlap here for the side of mi7 is we'll be able to take this point for their own amnesia force to retreat here as they're looking for the setup of the next objective here mi7 they do have that diva bomb and nano boost online if they want to try to initiate here with those ultimates but right now amnesia coming back in same composition we've seen them on this entire time. We'll see what they decide to go here. They don't have any ults in the bank for their own. They're still building up to some of those ults. Brian gonna touch the point here. Try to force down the members of MI7. Might be able to do that exactly for Dry Score, who drops down to try and help out. Grizzly's also down there trying to keep the rest of the team sustained. Nano Boost goes on to Lore here on the high ground. But meanwhile, the point flips over here in favor of Amnesia. Or so far, hasn't found anything, but Glyscore eats the Pokemon coming out for Brian, and the duplicate for Mattson is re removed offline here from Tanikby. There goes the Magnetic Grenade on to Nog. Lore able to eliminate the Life Weaver in this situation, and now with both TPS dead here for Amnesia, you gotta imagine it's gonna be retreated as we do have a pause coming in from the side of Amnesia. Yeah, that looked like a really good dive uh, from Doss. He split Lore from the rest of his team, but... Monarch just gives the nano boost over, and suddenly now, Do and suddenly Dawes is the one in trouble because he's facing a nano boosted Cassie with the f and Double Fang the Hammer does a lot of damage while you're nano boosted, and then that forces Dawes away, makes space for Lord to just take out Knock, put pressure on Rocket to the point where Rocket can't peek, and Matson doesn't get anything from that duplicate. I don't even know what he duplicate. I don't even know what he duped. And Ryan, I got his pulse pump eaten by Gliscor. Gliscor is, he was accused of being a Ryan OTP last season, but his diva Rob, pretty much, he can play pretty much any tank and be really great at it. Yeah, it's a cleanup from MI7 getting all the picks that they need. A team kill here for the side of MI7 as now Amnesia sent back to the drawing board here. Yeah, and even though MI7 did like double lap the DPS ult in that one fight where they, it was 99 to 0, they're building them back. Lurus almost back up to it, Tank is almost back up to it, Grizzly's nearing you know, rallying. Glyscar always still has that bomb to just dump on the point. I mean, he gets D mech now. Mathen goes over to the Sombra. The only tool that MI7, not MI7, we need to have to work with is the Nanowis a rocket. Right. Been looking for the perfect hack, does get it onto Laura, but the defense makes it from Glyscor, keeping that Cassidy alive for the most part. And a boost comes out onto Dawes here, is able to eliminate the Cassidy here on the side of MI7. So Laura now out of the fight. Dawes looking for the perfect dive here onto Monarch, does get swept up and gets burnt down by Tannic B and Glyscor there to protect their support. Grizzly now going a little too overpowered, just trying to get the rest of the team cleaned up here. But so far, MI7 doing a pretty good job on this hold so far. Yeah, and uh, now Dawes goes over the Diva, not gets caught out late and i7 they have that death blossom amnesia they have nothing real they have nothing all the only thing they're nearing is that pulse bomb from brian matson makes the sound right the switch to summer so late that it's gonna be unlikely for him to build the emp unless miraculously he does it's all up to tannic the monarch who the, are the two nearing the ultimates amnesia almost had that pulse bomb but that's about it but rocket finds grizzly with the anti-grenade from across the map somehow yeah, that's a big pick, and Brian also finding that pulse on killing a Tannic B is also big because Tannic B had the Death Blossom online. MI7 need to try to keep themselves stabilized in this fight. Monarch does have banana boost for desperate measures. There's a big anti nade coming out onto Nox. Forces out that translocate front, or forces out the Suzu. Mastin's able to get rid of Laura here as the Nano Boost goes on to Glyscore, building up to that Diva Bomb, trying to again stall out here. But now Grizzly's out of the fight, and so is Monarch, courtesy of Nox. Shoot those Kunai's from cross map. Bomb's gonna come out here from Glyscore. Trying to find anything. Will find the kill on to Brian. So it's still a back and forth affair as Tandy B comes back in the fight with the Death Blossom and eliminates Nox. Nano Boost goes on to Dawes here from Rocket, but Daw and Dawes is able to eliminate Tandy B as a result of it. Still a back and forth affair as Amnesia are in control of this point. And Dawes cleaning up the remaining picks. War now out of the picture. Glyscore out of the mech. Will get hit by the EMP as Dawes on an absolute rampage right now. Rocket will clean up Grizzly, and we're going to a point three to decide this first map. That was looking. It looked like it was going Amnesia's way, and then it looked like it was going to MI7's way, and then it finally went back to Amnesia's way. 
if Tanakli doesn't die there with the Death Blossom in hand, he still came back and got it off. But if he doesn't die there, that outcome probably would have been different. And it was a hack from Madsen that locked him in place. So he couldn't, he was in the mid animation of teleporting and he was trying to teleport away from the false bomb, but Madsen managed to hack him and lock him in place. So he had nowhere to go and just died to the splash damage of the false bomb that was right next to him. Definitely not the most, definitely not the best situation you want to be in. If you are a Reaper, you obviously have that Shadow Wraith, but Sombra can just hold right click and uh, look at you. Maybe give a little bit of wave, uh, maybe give a T-Bag if you're not in Trank, because T-Bag is not allowed here. But regardless of which, heading over to Antarctica Labs for our final map, in, for our final point in the series. And totally different composition from either side. Amnesia running the Doomfist while MI7 sticking with that Arisa composition. Yeah, and this well does favor uh, this does favor my seven because well, if you don't know lore and you don't know Overwatch in general, Orissa was designed to specifically take it down Doomfist. All of her abilities say no to him, and my seven also has running Torb and the Bastion. So if even if Dawes like does manage to get past Gliscor by somehow, he's gonna be up against Torb, who has the Overlord and the shotgun, and Lore, who can always just switch to Turmoil and just pump blood into the face of the Doomfist. And uh, Torb also is going to be great for marking uh, Matson and Brian, who are on double flanker. And but Amnesia doesn't want to switch off with it. They're staying the Doom. Yeah, the Doomfist can, however, still take advantage of an Arisa composition like this, unless you're Dawes, in which case, not the right positioning there. It does get killed out by Tannic B in the aftermath as Amnesia are just trying to wait for this advanced setup to come in. Brian is peppering down Lore on that fashion, trying to set up for the perfect angle. Matson going around looking for the Torbjorn and the Torbjorn turret. Gonna try to get a hack onto a good target without being in sight of that turret, as we see, just checking the corners, making sure they can make that proper move over to the other side of the map. See Tannic being in sight. We'll see if it works into their favor here. Goes for the hack with the Doofus dive coming in from Dawes. They want to try to focus this Torbjorn down. So far, it got rid of that immortality field from Monarch. Tannic Beast turret also out of the picture here. Amnesia trying to put the pressure on, and it looks like it's starting to get that pressure into good motion. Lore now out of the picture. Rocket eliminating the Bastion threat here for the side of Am for the side of MI7. Amnesia, however, is just still looking for more. But Grizzly stuck in a corner, got hacked out in that situation, was unable to keep themselves alive. And now Brian still trying to go to work. Has the pulse bomb for desperate measures. Another hack goes on to Tannic Me in the back line. Pulse bomb goes for a whip, is unable to hit the landing onto Monarch, who used that implication matrix. And so far, Amnesia. Are trying to find these picks, but MI7 are just coming back and stabilizing better. Now, now the Katsuna Rush comes out here from Nock, trying to turn the tide. Dawes is now nano boosted on the Doomfist, trying to chase down the remaining members. Gets rid of Monarch and gets rid of Lore. Also gets a Meteor Strike right on the Grizzly with Rocket and finishing up the kill. And it looks like finally Amnesia are getting this point for their own. Yeah, the problem with Amnesia's comp is that it doesn't have that much point presence. MI7 has all the point presence in the world because they have an Orisa. They also have a Bastion, they have a Torb. Their comp is meant to play group together and bunker down. Amnesia haven't really, they executed a good, like a decent die, but they didn't, they have so much cap percentage because, well, Gliscor just existed. Yep, here comes the configuration artillery out from Lore, trying to pressure out Rocket. Won't be able to get that final blow though. Matson looking for the EMP to try and engage, gets found out before they're able to unleash the EMP. So they have to retreat, force themselves back. And now MI7 comfortably take that point back for their own. 97%, someone from Anisha has to touch this point before it flips over. Brian is gonna be the candidate. Does get the touch, just a five man EMP landed by Matson. But so far, there's no value getting resulted from it. Now Lore finds two with that grenade in the back line. Tanning be clean up Dawes and Nox and the rest of the pick all going red in the kill feed. MI7, a statement here on Antarctica Labs to bring us to, to get their first map win of the season. First map win of the season, but I want to say that that was completely Amnesia's fault. They should not have, they should, I don't know why they stayed the Doom comp. You're playing, a, you're playing into a comp that literally counters you. They kind of just bashed their head into a wall and hope to God that something worked. They did eventually take the point, but by the time they took the point, well, I've, MI7 already had accrued about 92%, so they only had to win one fight. And that one fight was Gliscor pulling everybody in to the buffed grenade from Bastion's, from the Lord's Bastion that was just launched into the Terra Surge and killed. 
Yeah, definitely. That Terra Surge can be dangerous. There's a reason why one of the main compositions in the higher leagues of Overwatch right now is using Orisa and Ilari. You are able to use that Terra Surge and then use the Captive Sun with Ilari to be able to pull everybody in and get as much damage as possible. Of course, unfortunately, Ilari is not enabled here in Tranquility as they are not enabled in Comp yet. You'll be seeing some of Ilari on Thursday, most likely, for uh, Tranquility. But nonetheless, a pretty good start here from MI7 taking the lead in this series. And now Amnesia have to pick the map pick here for our hybrid map so we'll have to see what that choice is going to be here for that hybrid map pick here denji yeah they seem like their weakness is brawl so i would not go to ike involved um they're probably either going to go to hollywood or per per pariso um both are very good dive maps I amnesia mean, just seems like they're more comfortable in the dive since like they tried to force dive against an orissa with the doomfist you can force dive against the orissa with the winston it was a little more easier but uh, Orisa was literally designed to counteract Doom, and that's exactly what Gliscor did, just not allowing Doss to play the game that entire point. Yeah, definitely. It did seem like that Dawes was doing a really good job on that D.Va. We definitely saw a lot of strong performances from uh, from Dawes, especially on those dive-oriented naps. And the good news is for Amnesia, they have decided to bring us to Brazil. We're going to Paragio for our next map here. So it'll be interesting to see what these teams are going to be cooking in the kitchen when it comes to this map pick. Because Paragio, known for those sort of dive compositions, but it can be... And also known for a lot of high ground that you can take advantage of, especially if you are a hit scan like the best hit scan winner in discord tier last season lore on the side of mi7 so it's going to be interesting to see what the move is going to be here from the side of amnesia you also saw that the sides did swip it's going to be uh, slides did switch excuse me amnesia are going to be on the attack first while mi7 on the defense yeah and mi7 i would kind of expect them to run the diva comp um for defense that's it plays into glide score strengths glide score also was very at, was like always seemed to favor the diva over the Winston when he was on Wildcat boards, um, and that's just because he was way better at his diva than he was at his Winston. I don't even I've, I've never really seen him play him play Winston, even when I uh, rang for the Cat Boys for a couple weeks. Um, but I wouldn't expect Glasgow to play anything besides me. He may may they'll play Arissa, may they'll play Diva, but I don't really think they're gonna play anything besides those two. So I'm just thinking that probably is gonna be a Diva defense comp with Tannicly on that Torbjorn, because if there's one thing that counters dive, it's it's a pretty much any DPS that can put a bunch of burst damage into Winston, eat the heals, eat the nade, mark the flankers. Um, and that's Torv is really good at marking flankers. Diva, of course, has always kind of been good against Winston with all the burst damage of the micro missiles. She can defense matrix all the support trying to come in from the Ana. And as I, as I said, Amnesia, uh, not Amnesia, am I seven coming out on the Diva comp with the Torbjorn and Ash uh, on a break. Amnesia showing a double flex backline with Winston, Genji, and Sombra. I Brian was on the far of, but uh, okay, now he's on the. I'm just gonna stop talking. Yeah, you never want to say what the attackers are running on the attack until they come out of that spawn room. It's never guarantee what they're going to be running. The only case that it's not the case is that what they're running is not what they come out of the spawn room is if they're running the winner. Yeah, I do think that uh, Noct might have. I think they're. I think uh, Amnesia has the read that maybe they'll. My son is going to play that risk, and that's why Noct is on the Zen. But the problem with the Zen is against pretty much any dive comp or like sort of divers is. He's super frail. He is a glass cannon in himself, and he got this discard range nerf, so it's a little more risky to uh, put a discard onto a person because you have to walk a little more forward now. See what the move is here from Amnesia as they start diving up here. Dawes looking for that pressure onto Gliscor. A lot of damage coming in. A hack, a Discord Orb, and a, a Tesla Cannon. But Danik B does get the trade off here onto Dawes. So Amnesia down their main tank. And you know, you already see them trying to retreat. Rocket going to be the last one to try and get out of there. But Gliscor looking for the push. And Nox will get kicked out here by Lore in the aftermath. And Amnesia just trying to get back. And they're just stumbling at the doors. Yeah, it was a good setup to try to get Gliscor in the mix. But. Great support from Monarch and Grizzly to keep him in, and Gliscor had the defense matrix over the top of Dawes, so any support coming in from Rocket was just getting negated, allowing Tanithi just to hit the E and right-click and right click Dawes until he was just a corpse on the ground. Yeah, so Amnesia looking back for the focus kick here, not going for those long-range discords, will land one on the Gliscor once again. Gliscor going out of range to get rid of that Discord orb, but Tanithi's turret 
in the back line, does get eliminated. Now Dawes going for the far back line reach, and once again gets picked out by Tannic B. Tannic B now finding two, finding three in this fight so far on the Torbjorn. Cleaning up the rest of the field, looking for a fourth here on some Rocket. Gwyscore will clean it up, and MI7 continuing this hold so far. Yeah, and the problem with uh, Amnesia's comp is they, they're, Daz isn't really waiting for the setup. I, I, don't, I haven't seen Brian in at the same time Daz goes in, so when Daz is in, Brian's like seems like he's somewhere else or not set up yet, and it's just disjointed. And, and that kind of has allowed MI7 to start building up a lot of ultimates. They're coming to, oh, that was a beef jump. Okay. Um, Amnesia not really have any ultimates at all built up since they have lost fights so fast. Rocket's the only person really building up to anything, and Dawes is already. Matt's in force out, Brian's half HP, Dawes is already falling low again. As the bomb comes up, or finds nothing, and Dawes dies. It, it, he's having the tank experience. Yeah, I mean, it's not the main tank experience that you would expect if you're an Overwatch 1 player. Still, not a great experience right now for Dawes. Still, MI7, they're still trying to keep this under wraps. Amnesia are looking for their next dive attempt. As Rocket does have this Nano Boost online, we'll see if that goes on to Dawes and what the approach strategy is going to be. Gliscor just pepper spraying around, looking for the Sombra of Matson to make sure that Matson can't get into the back line for a sneaky play. Little do they know that Matson is currently right on top of them, and Lore fought, dies here for the side of MI7. That's the first casualty on the defensive side. Dawes trying to keep themselves alive here. Did get that Nano Boost from Rocket, but is not getting a lot of healing as Nock out of the picture as well here, courtesy of Tannic B. All bump from Brian is a whip. It almost landed on the Tannic B, but they were able to stay alive as the Nando Boost now invested onto that Torbjorn. Dawes invests the Primal Rage into this as well, but all the kills are going red in the kill feed now as the Amnesia is just cleaning up the remainder picks. Gliscor will be able to finish out Rocket, but that point's being captured, and Gliscor is the last remaining person here in this fight. Lore, however, back in the fight. He's able to get the headshot kill on the Dawes, trying to keep this alive here for the side of MI7 as Gliscor, Gliscor goes back for the touch. Does get hacked up by Matson, but it's staying alive until they get the mech here, trying to keep this fight alive. Lore out of the picture now. Brian, the last remaining person for Amnesia, and they're going to be retreating as MI7 continue this hold. 76% taken by Amnesia. Yeah, really great. The problem was, uh, Lore got the bob off before he died, but that EMP is probably going to say signal the end of this hold for MI7. As MI7, they almost got that overtime. That's really great, but the problem with Paricio is. It, it, it can, even if it was a team that has a really great first offensive hold, it can shift in a heartbeat. But the good thing for MI7 is Amnesia have zero ultimates since they pretty much had to invest everything in their bank to try to take that point. So definitely not the greatest start that Amnesia were looking for, but they nonetheless do get this cart moving here. MI7 now have some ultimates in the bank to try and hold them through here on the streets of Parezo. Again, this is that high ground I was talking about where you can pretty much just Look down on the highest of grounds, probably 20 meters up, and just pepper anybody from afar. Already a good start here for the side of MI7 as Gliscor was able to eliminate Nox in the early phases. Now they're just trying to set up on that right side. Riley comes out here from Grizzly, you know, heading toward the entire right side of the map. Monarch <laughs> ends up getting, getting the kill onto Rocket with the assistance of the rest of the team. And Amnesia right now just trying to look for answers, but right now they're coming up zero and with nothing so far. Nothing so far. The rally to engage locks. Nas in place. Lock. Rocket in place. Rocket's gonna have that nano. Brian's gonna have that pulse bomb. Nox nearing that consuming rush. Uh, Lord, Kenneth, he did try to go for a little bit of a hammer kill on Rocket as he was trying to retrieve, but Monarch took that away from him. But MI7, they're building up to their ultimates again. They're gonna have about three in this fight. No, uh, knowing Lord, he's gonna have that bomb once the actual fight breaks out with all the poke damage he's been putting down. Amnesia looking for the attack here. Rocket tried to go for the nano boost, but had to retreat a little bit to keep themselves alive. And Gliscor gets rid of Matson before the fight even begins here. Amnesia still look like they want to try to invest into this, but Tanny B drops from the high ground, unleashes the Molten Core in the middle of Dawes' face. So far, Dawes recovering from those third degree burns, but is getting peppered down by the rest of the team. Will get hit by the whip shot from Grizzly. But still, Brian able to equalize. Gets rid of the Brigida here. As now Brian coming out here with the nano boost applied, able to get rid of Tannic B. But still, two picks going in favor here for the side of MI7. It's a back and forth repair. Brian still trying to stray in this, but so far, the rest of MI7 just peered up on the high ground, and Brian is in the disadvantage. Yeah, Laura's still up on the high ground. So is Monarch. Lasko can just hold the car because he has the bomb just to drop. Now, Amnesia. Again, burned everything and nothing found from it. MI7 only uses that Molten Core. Grizzly didn't even have the rally. And now MI7 has three ultimates just to close us out. And the Nano Boost, the Bob, for the, the Bob and the Bomb. And 
Uh, Amnesia are currently kind of going into a small room, and that's not really a good idea when you're against the Ana and Diva. It's gonna be difficult. Amnesia looking for that small room approach. Glyscore is there to try and stop them more, peeking from a distance. Grizzly trying to enter on the side with Tanaki as the Nano Boost goes on to Glyscore. Bob invested from Laura to stop the card from moving any further. Dynamite on the card stops Brian from getting in there. Dawes loses their mech early here. Rocket and Brian also out of the fight as well. One by one, Amnesia will follow that card going to be stopping right in the streets of Parejo. 97 meters taken by Amnesia here, but that's all they're going to get here. That's all they're going to get, and that was just really a great play from MI7. Just a counter dive, knowing that Amnesia is going to play that one send dive. Um, Dawes is going in, and I either Brian wasn't ready, or he's getting forced out by Tanic the or the or tank these turret early in the flight, so when Dawes is in, Brian has to retreat. Matt is not there. Everything was just disjointed. MI7 just played that perfectly. They had the, they knew what comp to play. I, perfect. Gliscor is a, he's a diva has been super strong and pretty much it actually forced Doss to go over to Diva because he was having such of a hell of a time with Winston trying to get anything done that he just said, "No, nah, I'm done. I'm not playing Winston anymore. I'll just play Diva." But it was too late. Now Amnesia with a completely different approach on defense, going the. Sigma with the double deflex backline and a Torb Ash. Yeah, I mean, it is an approach that you want to go for. This is more of a spammy composition that you can do to try and prevent the enemy team from getting into your backline, but it's going to be difficult considering that spam composition typically is countered by dive, but we'll have to see what the approach is going to be here from Amnesia, where they want to set up, where they want to put their team. Right now, MI7 showing that dive composition here with Laura on the Sojourn here, uh, Denji. So... Very well could see that dive style come out from MI7 to try and engage fast. Try and engage fast, and one of Laura's best heroes that he's known for is his Sojourn. Uh, even throughout the nerf stages, this guy literally finds pick after pick after pick. He literally put, uh, does his best lip impression and just turns fights around with his overclocks and the railgun. MI7 are going to have a little bit of an issue, harder time getting here since my score. Uh, Diva doesn't really do that well against Spam. Winston does a little bit better because his uh, cleave damage can go through the shield you know, and the eat of Sigma. So it's going to be all about getting the target super low and having uh, Tannic follow up, but Glyscore immediately is taking on the mech. But Laura finds a headshot of the knock already. Yeah, and that tells you how good Laura is on Sojourn. Already finding that early pickoff here, so Amnesia down one of their supports. It is the one that's enabling all the damage that they're pumping in as well here, so we'll have to see what the response is going to be here from MI7, how fast they're going to engage. It's going to be difficult with Glyscore out of the mech, but we'll be able to get that mech up right now, in fact. So now there's an opportunity here for MI7 to re-engage into this fight here. Rock, however, already lands on the D.Va, and Mathen just currently peeking from the low ground. Now the damage going into that Sigma of Dawes, but the support is there from Amnesia. And so far, Semi-7 looking for a way to get in. Tanixi goes for the aggressive push, gets hit with a ball to the face, courtesy of Nox. Now Glyscore going for the same approach. Once again, we'll just get tempered out by the rest of Amnesia. And so far, this defense working for Amnesia. It's working for Amnesia because Diva really struggles against the comp that MS7 is running is it would be great if uh Glyscore is on Winston. Uh he's not on the Winston, so now he just goes decides to mirror with the Sigma, but even though Lord got a really nice uh, pick off the knock, the Glyscore is out of mech, so they couldn't capitalize. But Lore has just been kind of existing here and getting the overclock. He's almost up to that overclock already, and both supporters are up for MI7 as well. So I won't be surprised if we see a nano overclock as Lore already finds the match before he can get that bomb online. Yeah, definitely big pick there, being able to get rid of one of the DPS this time. Laura now getting the Nano Boost with the Overclock online, looking for any picks as they know that both supports are in that small corridor. Dawes gets swept up, gets back out, uh, gets back up immediately here as the rest of the team just trying to pile on the rest of them. Laura looking for that kill on O'Brien. Will be able to get help with Tanifee to be able to get the elimination. It's not forced to use the Transcendence here to try to equalize the score, and it might have just done the trick. Dawes gets rid of Tanifee here, but Laura goes up to the high ground, trying to pressure everybody from a close, uh, from a very very close contact, gets rid of Rocket to Mortality Field, and Rocket forced to back out of this fight. Dawes, however, still alive on the point, causing mayhem right now on the Sigma, and now we're not coming back in the fight as well. It's Amnesia continuing the hold. Amnesia continue the hold, but they had to blow everything, except for the DPS. They had to blow pretty much everything. They have the DPS so up because Brian and Mattson both died pretty fast, and now Monarch goes over to that Baptiste. Uh, Tanthi's got out that Dragon Strike, but that's pretty much it, as Glasgow is building to that flux, he's keeping even with Dawes. 
But it's gonna be up to Canically or Laura to find a first pick off again and hope that MI7 can capitalize on that. No, we see that MI7 are able to capitalize. Canically looking for the early engage, uses the Dragon Strike onto Dawes, forcing Dawes out of position, Ooh. and Dawes just gets finished out by Grizzly here. So that's a very good start here for Amnesia. Now the tank out of the equation. Molten Core comes out from Brian, trying to equalize the score. Keep the keep MI7 off of this point, but Glide score. Sitting comfortably right now on the point, just trying to get the capture percentage. The second tick is claimed here by MI7, still claiming objective as the Bob now comes out here from Matson, lands right in the middle of point, just gets burnt down by every which way angle, and MI7 still trying to stabilize. Tannic be out of the fight, however, so now they're down one of a DPS. Make that both of their DPS as Matson gets the dynamite kill on the war. The, the Grizzlyx Flux forced out here by Glyscor. Grizzly oh, trying no, to no. find this <laughs> final kill on the Brian. Will be able to, but will get hit by the by Matson in the meantime. MI7, five seconds remaining on the clock. They have to try and touch this card. Glyscor and Monarch are there to try and touch. But now the, 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 the Grizzlyx Flux comes out here from Dawes. Land in that small room. Overtime is triggered here by Tannic B, but they unfortunately are in the grave. And Amnesia are going to even up this series one to one yeah you all know um mi7 had a great defense and my ebony not M mi7 had a great defense amnesia was was just better and the fact that uh mi7 just kind of seemed confused like they were getting early picks but then all the rest of the picks just never came in as fast as they need to be so like a lot of time for those who they picked off first to come back into the fight and uh amnesia capitalized on their map choice and I think this is going to be a, this might be a long one as we're going to go over, wait, is ha are we going to halftime next? I am confused because now it's like the format changed this season. Yes, it, sh it should be halftime now because we still have a halftime here in Tranquility. Of course, it always happens after the second map. But so far, it's a one-to-one -one tie in this series between MI7 and Amnesia. We're going to jump to a quick halftime break. And when we come back, we'll see the conclusion of this amazing rivalry between MI7 and Nostalgia Org and see if MI7 can extend their lead or if Nostalgia Org is still still bouncing, still ca carrying that momentum from that Discord tier championship last season. We'll see you after the break.
Come on. A little bit, a little bit of technical difficulty there, but welcome back everybody to Tranquility Gaming Season 11 regular season coverage. Bowsy joined here by Denji as we are in the middle of a very, a tale as old as time, as they would say, between MI7 and the Nostalgia Org, in this case, Amnesia. Currently tied up at the half as we head into map number three here, Denji. The choice is Dorado for our third map of the series. Kind of a little surprising one to me. I'm not sure what MI7 is going to be playing here. Uh, Amnesia, it just kind of seems like their map to take because their strength is a dive, although they did pull out the, po the poke and full hell that um mi7 on that a uh, periso map i was kind of expecting like rialto or maybe a uh, circuit to come out from mi7 because glide score is a very good great sigma player so i was kind of expecting circuit but not dorado unless uh, mi7 have something in their back pocket that we haven't seen yet yeah, definitely we'll have to see what the what that back pocket is hiding right now for mi7 who are still trying to get this victory in this they did have a very good run on antarctic peninsula but then when they went to our second map which was parejo it was almost an amnesia sweep they were able to push the cart oh no they weren't able to push the cart all the way but they were able to get almost a full hold on mi7 so be interesting to see what the move is going to be here from the side of mi7 what they're trying to plan on and what amnesia's response is going to be to this map uh, we're currently waiting on the two teams to get started into the map here, but hopefully it'll be interesting to see what we have planned here for Dorado. Again, our third map of the series. Yeah, and I kind of expect uh, MS7 to play the Diva again. I don't really expect them to play Winston unless Gliscor has been practicing Winston in the offseason. But he seems like he is favors the Diva way more than Winston. Obviously, uh, Dawes seems to favor the Winston more than Diva, so it's kind of like, which tank is better? <laughs> Currently, it's kind of D.Va, because D.Va just does a lot more burst to uh, Winston than Winston does, so Winston's strength is... His damage goes through uh, shields, matrix, any like, uh, type of eat it goes through, it and it can cleave, so it can build a lot of ultimate, and it's pretty strong when he's got that mana boost attached to him. But, as that my 7 are coming out on the uh, D.Va comp, as Amnesia are coming, are deciding to go back over to the sigma poke because it works so well on uh Parejo, they're just deciding hey if we can full hold them on this comp let's just do it again and it is doable on dorado but once you're forced off by that main high ground overlooking the point it becomes a problem because sigma does n sigma loves high grounds there's not really like wide open spaces yeah, Sigma is gonna is gonna be interesting to see how Dawes the Sigma plays around this sort of composition that MI7 are coming out with. Uh, the only differences I see from Amnesia's composition, Matson on the Soldier this time, while Nak is on the Brigitte compared to the Ashes Zen we saw them on earlier. But MI7 coming out with this composition, more on the Widowmaker, looking for that early pickup, almost finds the head of Rocket, but. Unfortunately, Rocket's just a little bit too fast for Laura to hit that perfect landing here. MI7. So looking for the engagement. Laura sticking on this Widowmaker. This is the longest I think I should see Widowmaker right now, but still want to try to get that early pick potential. Mapson poking out from this angle. Panic be going to eliminate Brian's turret in the meantime right now as the two teams just waiting for the perfect opportunity to engage each other. Deflect comes out here from Tanvi to keep themselves alive. Glyscore body blocks the rock coming out from Dawes. Right now it's just a poking game. On my seven so far, just keep pushing that card forward as Amnesia is just trying to keep them back. Yeah, they managed to force Dawes off of that forward position because Lore hit a full charge headshot taking Dawes extremely low. Immortality field has to be forced out. Dawes uses his own uh, kinetic grasp. But Summer 7, no picks come out yet, but they did take a little bit of map control. But now Noct is just barreling forward at Tanaki, but not able to get the pick. And now MI, MI, uh, not MI7, I mean, they're kind of in a weird spot right now because they, they are now on the low ground. And that is exactly what you want. It was your MI7 and immediately pick up on a rocket. The rest of the pieces should fall because the bab is their main source of healing is not gone. Matt then finds a pick on the lower in the meantime. Yeah, definitely. When your Baptiste's gone, the Brigida is your only heal. The Brink can only really heal if something hits the mate, so she has armor packs online. So, not currently in a lot of pressure. Starting to get pressured out here by the dive, but that's a three man plus coming out from Dawes. Grizzly burst to the down immediately, burns to the ground immediately after using that Valkyrie. And now, with Monarch out of the fight, you have to imagine MI7 are going on the retreat. They're going to go on the retreat, and now um, Amnesia can retake the positioning they gave up, but. Uh, Diva just 
It's just that Diva is not really that great against Sigma. The comp that every time is running is kind of weird. Glasgow looks like he's going to switch, and he does. He decides to go over to the Winston. Let's see if this works. Glasgow always seems to have to favor the Diva over the Winston, but besides that, now if he needs time to pull the Winston, now's the time. But uh, Amnesia almost have four ults online, and now it's seven. They do have that blade. They almost have the Katsune, but the blade can just be easily countered by that rally of Knock or even the two DPS ults on the side of Amnesia. Of the move is Taniki obviously looking for that preferred setup location right now. It's interesting comes out from Monarch in the main, starting to throw those Kunai's into Dawes as Glyscore goes for the dive. Suzu forced out early here as the rally and window both invested here from the side of Amnesia. And Taniki unfortunately will fall to the hands of Nock, who's starting to push forward on this Brigida. Finds three in this fight, and Amnesia cleaning up the picks one by one. They'll continue the hold. Continuing the hold, Amnesia, dude. They use that rally, so now one of their tools against that blade is gone. Lore in the meantime did switch over to the Ash. I didn't even notice that, as now he has a Bob on my Monarch decides to go over to the Ana. Uh, but Amnesia still both have those have both those DPS salts online, so if anything, the Molten Core can just be used to stop Tanakhi's blade or the aggression. My score dives in, doesn't really find anything, and is already taken very low, and the sights coming out from Matson. Uh, oh, Grizzly gets caught. Visor from Matson does find the mercy of Grizzly and Matson 180 flick to hit the melee right onto Tanigby before that blade comes out. Matson to cleaning up the rest of the field alongside the rest of Amnesia. Now 30 seconds left here for MI7. They have to come up with answers. They have to come up with answers and uh Tanigby has been holding this blade so long that Daz already has another computer flux up. Brian's still holding that one core. Either if they're winning for the nano boost, it's just not gonna happen. Like it, you, you don't have that much time left. You have to get something done here, or else you're gonna get full held. And that mission may go up to uh, to one in the series. I think B looking for that opportunity has the blade online. Those think they can go for that flank as Grizzly unleashes the Val Valkyrie to start off the fight. Glyscore uses that primal rage as well as the cart starts moving over time. Gonna be triggered. Glyscore over dropping extremely low. Molten core forced out here from Brian as Tanakhi finds three with the blade. The beautiful sleep from Monarch right on to Dawes, who is using the Gravitic Flux. Tanakhi trying to clean up the rest of the picks. Dawes will fall, but suddenly Brian and Matson and Dawes are bringing this back. And the check the cart reaches the check one before Matson can touch. And even though MI7 are all dead, that cart is moving forward to the second phase. Yeah, the blade came out and Gly and Hennessy just immediately cuts down three members of Amnesia. Amnesia does even, but the problem is Matson decided not to touch the point. He just shot at he just let it fl fly through as it was getting moved by Tanakhi, and even though Tanakhi did die, Matson C9. There's no other point than Matson could have ran to the point and tried to contest it, but he decided just to let it go. Matson now walking around, constantly trying to sprint to different locations and find these sort of kills. Now peppering down Glyscor. He switches over to the Diva here to try and pressure out the enemy Diva of Dawes as Amnesia right now looking for the perfect defense. MI7 looking for the perfect engagement tool, which they don't have a lot of tools to engage with, but we'll see. But that's a good way to get in here. Tanaki finds the headshot on Damasin, so now that peeping soldier from behind out of the equation. Dawes still peppering from the high ground, though. The rest of MI7 looking for the push. Is now the turn from Brian out of the picture, and the nano boost invested here onto Glyscore. Window comes out from Rocket to try and stop that Diva in their tracks, but now uh, Glyscore is going to go for a different angle. Goes back up for the dash. Now the rally invested here by Nock, just trying to push forward. Will get slept up by Monarch. Monarch hitting two clutch seats here, but might not matter. Brian now gets the kill onto Tanaki here, and he's just starting to push the aggression. The Bob does come out here from Lore, and it does get rid of Rocket's immortality field, and Nock is also out of the picture. Now the tactical visor comes out from Matson, but Already Brian's now out of the picture as well here. MI7 looks to just be winning this fight one by one. Amnesia just trying to come with answers. Bomb comes out here from Glyscore trying to turn the tide. Will find a kill on the rocket as well. And now MI7, you have to push forward or else this is a wasted fight. It's a, it would be a wasted fight. All they have to do is deal with Dawes and knock to his switch over to the Zen. And that bomb from Glyscore, he slid it against the wall to the point where it landed perfectly in the doorway where Rocket was trying to hide. The payload has reached the checkpoint. Yeah, beautiful Diva Bomb set up there as the cart will advance into the second point here. Tanipi looking for the stagger kill onto Brian as well, but the healing is there from Rocket and Knock to keep the Torbjorn alive. S7 still trying to look for any sort of advantage here to try and start this next fight as a turret. You can just hear the beeping of Brian's turret, just constantly focusing on Tanipi and then losing its focus. Now Dragon Strike comes out here from Tanny B, lands right onto the side, but no members of Amnesia are there. They start pushing forward to keep themselves out of harm's way. 
My seven just poking through this alleyway, just trying to find that first pick as the cart starts moving once more. Starts moving, and Madsen went over to a summer in the meantime, and uh, which is gonna. I, they just wanted to kill Lore, and as Lore takes a ton of pressure, it's taken out. Um, but MI7, they have pushed this cart way further than they should have, as what was looking like a full hold on the side of Amnesia has turned kind of Amnesia's worst nightmare, as now they're in third point. And Amnesia is currently stuck as a bomb from Glasgow. Another well placed one just placed directly in the hallway. No one can escape. There's no cover there. Yeah, the immortality field is able to keep most of the team alive, but Knock unfortunately was the only casualty of that Diva bomb. And now MI7 starting to push forward. Tanic B with a beautiful headshot. Make that two. Grizzly Sickness is up. Brian in the aftermath, taking away that 3k from Tanic B. Still trying to find that extra kill on the Knock here as that card starts approaching the final checkpoint. Which is the final checkpoint. If MI7 can finish this with time in the bank, as Dawes is trying his best to get there. Matson does touch. Knock finds a pickoff on the Tanic B, but the Grizzly Rec comes up from Grizzly is. This is just gonna be a slaughter fest out. Lore went over to the soldier in the meantime, so, uh, unnoticed. And uh, it's looking like it's favoring MI7 currently. It's back and forth affair. Dawes and stuff to start to get rid of Glide Swords. Matson tries to go in for the touch. Does land the EMP, but it's one second too short as Amnesia, fortunately unable to touch that cart. MI7 bring the cart into the final checkpoint here and selling it in the middle of Lumerico with 6.2 seconds. On the time deck. Yeah, and well, it looked like a, it looked like a devastating full hold for Amne for MI7. Turns into Amnesia's worst nightmare, as MI7 somehow some, some uh fight and just brute force their way through the entirety of Dorado. Uh, Glide score, why shows why he's so good at the diva. All um, a lot of his bombs pretty much were some place where in areas where you couldn't escape from it, like. There's tech on Diva where you can slide the bomb off a wall and a team won't expect it just to land where it lands. And that's what Gliscar did on a couple. He slid it off of a object and it just landed in a spot where Emma, where uh, Amnesia wasn't expecting it. Now, Amnesia are coming out on that uh, true interested dive is what they wanted, what they played on per Parisia with modification to the DPS line. MI7, they're going to be playing a pocketed soldier with the Torb and Diva, so a complete counter dive again. And it worked very well in pre show, but until uh, Emmy has just uh, used all their ultimates they had to brute force their way through. It definitely is amnesia. They want to try to do that teleporter from Brian to put Rocket up on the orange building. That is typically a strategy to do here on Dorado just to put your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your Ana on that top spot. As Ryan looking for that teleporter up to the top and be able to help the rest of the team get up there. Rocket and Knox will be able to get up as and now MI7 looking to try and get that defense. But now both supports here from Amnesia are on the other side. That's in taking that flank over to the enemy, to the backside of MI7, looking for the perfect hack. But the turret is there. What an advance, what an anti day coming out from Monarch though. Right on to Knox. We'll burn down that Brigida immediately here. And MI7 already starting off on the good foot. Yeah, yeah. It just seems that like, uh, Amnesia is not. Uh, they're they're, they're dicing their style, but like they just seem disjointed. Like the backline's peaking when the team isn't ready. Knock peaks early. Uh, knock peaks early ahead of a, uh, ahead of a rocket, which is what you're supposed to do as Brig. But uh, for some reason, Do Dawes isn't in position. Brian is the one who should be pushing the cart in the situation. Dawes should be in position, like to at least follow up on a dive or at least get his supports into position on the diva. So when the nade does come, he can eat it or at least just uh, body block it and just stabilize. Instead, Dawes is on the ground pushing the cart during that time for some reason. Definitely Amnesia. Now looking for the approach once again. Taking his line right now, just trying to stay by the by the translocator that Madsen has put out here. Not going to be taking the right side here with trying to heal up Dawes as the rest of the team goes toward that high ground once again. The rest of the team just setting up for this engage. We're puffering them down there with the Sojourn. And so far, not a good start as Rockets already take a lot of damage. Will get killed out by the lore on that disruptor field. Now the rest of the team has to try and respond. Tanny Beast Turret does die here to knock, but Amnesia so far struggling to try and keep fi finding momentum. They're trying, trying to find momentum, and it, it just seems Amnesia. It just seems like they're lost. MI7 just has a comp that they're playing that. Kind of shuts down everything that Amnesia wants to do. They're playing a counter dive tank with the Diva, but they're playing a dive DPS line with the Tracer Sombra. Um, and MI7 has a, a 
DPS and a tank to deal with this flanker. Gliscor can spray and pray because he has infinite ammo. Just to fight check Madsen. The Torbjorn turn at Tannic D. Always can check Brian if he tries to go behind them. And then uh, even you can add Laura onto that because Laura can always just land a, a clean, crisp headshot onto any of the flankers and just insta kill them. It definitely is Madsen right now looking for the engage once again. We'll have to see what the move is here from Amnesia. Doss is out of the mech, so they're going to have to wait a little bit for the push to come in here as the two teams are trying to set up. Madsen having to back up as the rest of the team, as MI7 knew that the Sombra was back there. Dawes now back in the mech as Amnesia looking for this engagement opportunity. Now they see Valora is up on that high ground, trying to get pocketed uh, by both supports against Nanobusa and Monarch to keep them alive as Grizzly Pots the Valkyrie to keep the Ana alive, but still MI7 finding the picks that they need. Laura will eventually fall, but at the cost of two picks here for MI7, Grizzly unable to get that res off online. Glyscore able to eliminate Nox here as the bomb from Dawes finds absolutely nothing. Amnesia, they have to be in panic mode here soon, but Grizzly gets hacked out, just barely able to get alive. Blitzcore, beautiful defense matrix to keep up the Mercy. Just in case. Beautiful defense matrix from Glassberry Kill with the Mercy there, and now Amnesia, oh, uh, they're, they're in deep trouble. Sure, they have both DPS ults in the rally from Notch, but uh, Tannic D has that molten core just to say no to, just to deny his space. And um, Glassberry does have that bomb, which he's shown that he just puts that bomb in a place where nobody is expecting it. Uh, EMP connects with Lauren Gliscor's. Lore has been public enemy number one for the side of Amnesia. Uh, the also from Brian finds Gliscor, but the bomb from Gliscor finds Brian. Yeah, Brian unfortunately gets both ends of the spectrum, gets the kill, then gets killed. Amnesia still looking for the advantage here. Tang V's turret out of the fight as a rally now initiated here from Nock, trying to push forward. Tang V gets a bullet to the head, courtesy of Matson and the whip shot from Nock, keeping the diva of Gliscor away. Gliscor trying to stall it out here on that diva, but so far just trying to rely on the rest of the healers. Now Lore back in the fight, trying to bring that clutch factor into, into moment, momentum here, but Grizzly is out of the fight here as well. Amnesia continuing to push this card as Brian is now on a Rampage and now Amnesia, they're taking that first point. They take the first point in almost similar fashion to MI7 taking it in near overtime. But now MI7, they have the opportunity to uh, shut down the push of Amnesia. Hopefully sooner before than where Amnesia allowed them to push it to. But Amnesia, they have that nano they have the bomb, but MI7 really don't have that much. They, sure, they have the, they have that nano from Monarch coming up, but uh, Madsen. At this point, I don't really think Madsen and Brian, like, they're they're getting value, kind of, like, in fights where, like, everybody's low, there's low resources, but, like, these opening fights or pre-fights, uh, they're just getting forced out super early. As oh, my God. No, no, <laughs> no, I have her kill from Tannic B on the top. That was a nano-boosted hammer kill from Tannic B on to Nogs, and Dogs is going to get the switch on the Tannic B. All right, this going is going All right, okay, that did not go as planned, Dawes. Off the map. Okay, I think everything has just gone loony in the past 10 seconds. I don't think I am ever going to recover from what I've just seen. Regardless, Amnesia having to back up once again. I know it was an average kill and then a remake kill. You pretty much just got two of the kills that really happened. Both of the span of 10 seconds. I this, so I why we need to track bingo cards so we can keep track of all of this. I, for, I, I mean, the Vancouver Titans did that. Maybe we should do it. Uh, anyway, Amnesia now trying to set up for the next fight. Nox is out of the fight, however, so they have to try and wait for their Brigida to come back into this. Rocket does have this nano boost available here. Maxon does have that e EMP as well, but already is the Monarch trying to stop that Ana in his track. Lands the anti -nade. What a beautiful shot from Tanny, knowing that Maxon was in the back line, and now Maxon having to reset up again here. Wave for the Fade to come back. Wave to try and get this EMP back online here. Amnesia, however, they are relying on this EMP to come in play here, so we'll see if Matson is able to pull it off here. Amnesia ready for the dive. Here comes the move in from Dawes into the back line. Gets an boost here from Rocket, but Lord lands a railgun shot into Brian's head, so the Tracer now to the factor here for Amnesia. Matson still looking for this EMP, but now Dawes is out of the mech. Where is this EMP from Matson? They are waiting way too long for this EMP to come out. Now it finally comes out. Two will hit with Lore and Gliscor, but Lore immediately eliminated, but Rocket out of the picture as well here. Not trying to bring it back here. Has the Valkyrie online. It's now Grizzly going to go for the back line with the Valkyrie, but will eventually get hit by the Pulse Bomb, and MI7 unable to touch the card because of the sustainability rally, keeping Amnesia alive and bringing that card to the Lumerica. Yeah, and even though it seemed very grim for Amnesia there with uh, Matson holding the EMP, which, which seemed like he was going to hold it until next Tuesday, 
Um, the EMP comes out and comes with knock and knock becomes the tank and replaces dot in, in the place of Dawes and uh, and even though Blastgar did get his mech, almost got his mech back and almost remech killed uh, Matson, which would have been pretty funny if that would have ha if that would have happened twice. And as Lore already takes down Brian, but as Lore has just been a, a, a nuisance for MI7, everybody else is just kind of playing protect the president. And the president is Lore as the bomb comes up from oh, president down, president Lore. down, president down. Lore is out of the fight. Toss it. Hits the self destruction. Wait, the nano burst! Now the nano boost onto Grizzly as well. There's, there's just a shenanigans going on in the MI7 Discord. What is Someone happening? call E6. Someone call E6 right now. This is not legal in any way whatsoever, and this should really be addressed. Laura now back in the fight. MI7 setting up for this next engage here. Dawes trying to continue the push here on that high ground. It's Matson trying to burn down from the back line. Laura now looking for the perfect shot. Hits the real gun shot right into Brian. Now Dawes equalizes, finds the kill on Titanic B here as MI7 still looking for the advantage. Disrupt the field, hits the pillar. War trying to find anything, but eventually will find a face full of missiles courtesy of Dawes. Bomb comes out here from Glyscore trying to equalize. We'll get the kill on the rocket, but now Dawes is in your back line. Peppering your supports. Grizzly and Monarch getting a lot of pressure, but Dawes unable to get any of them eliminated. Now Titanic B uses the molten core, trying to force Amnesia off this card. Once again, not has that rally initiated. That's in almost to the EMP. This was the difference maker last time. We'll see if it's the difference maker here today, but Lauren has already found two. One with the overclocked, one with, no, with an almost shot. It's now three for Laura. Dawes gets the rematch on the Tandy B, but now four for Laura in this fight, trying to get the ace, but nobody is ever going to need you to touch. MI7 go to match point. MI7 oh, go to match point, but somebody just titled that map Looney Tunes, because that's exactly what it was for, <laughs> like, the entirety of uh, Amnesia's attack. Hammer kills, rematch kills, Ba... Uh, Nano Mercy, I think the Nano Mercy was intended to try for <laughs> Grizzly to go for the Resurrect on the Lord. <laughs> Which was gutsy as it didn't have work and they wasted an apple boost. <laughs> but MI7 managed to pull on the end even just fighting all the weird shenanigans that happened that map. I don't know what was going on at the time. Yeah, definitely. It did not look clean there from the side of Amnesia or MI7. It looks very wonky all around, but at the end of the day, I mean, MI7 won the map, so now they are currently up 2-1 to one and are looking at match point here in the series to try and finish this out. So we'll have to see if there's going to be a response here from the side of Amnesia, what they're going to be doing to try and equalize the score here and try to bring us to a decisive map number 5. It's all up to push right now with East Barancha, Coliseo, and New Queen Street as the choices. So we'll have to see what the choice is going to be here between the, for Amnesia and how these two teams are going to respond to whatever choice, whatever map choice is going to be. I honestly think that they're gonna to go to East Peranza. They know they seem dive. They like dive. East Peranza is probably like one of the maps where you can play dive. You can play brawl. You can pretty much play more. Your free, East Peranza is like the free map of the push maps. You can pretty much play a majority of comps there, and it will work. Coliseo is pretty brawl centric. New Queen Street pretty dive centric. East Peranza is like the comfort zone of everybody where it kind of plays into everybody's strengths. You don't have to be forced to play one specific comp in order to try to win. And East Peranza has won the map set. Well, uh, let's just say the Nostalgia mm. Orc doesn't have a good history with MI7 with. They have dropped East Peranza to MI7, I believe, every single time they've played it. Yeah, so there is a history between East Peranza and, and MI7 versus they had a Nostalgia. Meter lead. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll get it. I'll get into that. But the map choice by Amnesia is East Barancha. We are going oh, to God. East Barancha here for the Whoa. fourth map in the series. But this has a history to it. Anyone who's watched MI7 versus Reminiscence has seen the has seen the history between MI7 and the Salt Org. We'll know East Barancha by heart. Season 9 Grand Finals, MI7 versus Reminiscence. And Reminiscence was in the lead by, by oh, basically 100 meters entering that map. I lied. The map is no longer East Project. It's Coliseo. Uh, so they have decided to switch it up. Coliseo is the map choice here from the side, I believe, from the side of Amnesia. So they're switching up. They're not going to East Project. They're going to the Brawl map, which... Is a risky choice here, Denji, because when we saw Antarctica, which is primarily a brawl map, it was MI7 taking the victory in that matchup. So we'll have to see if this is the play that Amnesia are looking for to try and get the victory in this series. Or try to at least yeah. bring us to map five. At least try to bring it up to map five. But uh, in the grand finals last season, Coliseo was the map that uh, uh, that uh, Reminiscence um, managed to put down MI7 for good. And as, as MI7 did not make one of those miraculous comebacks, 
from 100 meters down like they did on Ishperanza, but Ishperanza is a map where you can do that a little more frequently. Uh, it kind of just plays better to comebacks. Uh, Coliseo is one of those maps where 90% of the time the teams that uh, caps the first checkpoint gets forward spawns activated will be the team that takes that map. However, I've seen crazy comebacks on um, Colise on Coliseo. Uh, wait, are we on Ishperanza or Coliseo? Because the screen says Ishperanza, but I heard Coliseo. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, neither do I at this point. Uh, originally, I saw Coliseo was uh, the map choice. Well, originally, I saw that Esperanza was the choice in the map select screen. Then it was Coliseo that was the map choice in the select screen. So we'll have to see what the actual map choice is, regardless of which, uh, whichever map it's going to be, is going to be an interesting one to see what the solution is going to be here. Uh, yep, called as, as we got more of our producer, our producer is trolling. Uh, everyone blame Rhino Vod. I'm kidding. Please thank your producers and your observers. They do all the lift work here in, tra in your uh, broadcast to make sure this production style can get to you. But the map choice is oh, Coliseum. Uh, that would be a first if I saw it. This would be a first. I've never seen Sigma played on Coliseum, but Dawes is showing Sigma currently. Well, MI7 is showing that uh, Arissa comp, and I, Daz is not going to have a good time, because what Arissa likes to do to mini, mini tanks is just walk forward and bully them, and that's exactly what she's going to do with Sigma, since Sigma is not really good at holding space at holding space against a tank like Arissa that can fortify, eat damage, and also stun. Even though Sigma kind of does the same thing, uh... Arissa is just better at holding space than Sigma is currently. Definitely. up in the center here. Amnesia looking for that early pick potential here with that Sigma. Sitting on the sidelines, just trying to poke out anybody who comes into the arches. In this case, Panic Me doing exactly that. Glide score there to help them and support them in that movement. Right now, the two C's meeting back and forth. Amnesia going to get control of the bot first because they are the more aggressive team. Glide score moving in with that javelin spin. Misses the javelin spear and has to use the fortify early here to keep himself up here. But right now, it's Amnesia starting to be on the back foot. And now, Rocket out of the picture is going to solidify that. But Monarch and Glide score also fall here. So all of a sudden, Amnesia starting to pick up the pace. But Saw's out of the picture as well. Means it's more so a back and forth affair. But MI7 just going to be able to barely keep themselves in the advantage here for a little bit longer. A little bit longer. It's technically just technically and Lord just going to tear. Even though Glyscore falls, he goes over to the Ramatra right now, but that's the problem. Sigma just doesn't really like hold space that well. He got bullied back so far and it gave that might have all the space in the world. It opened up enough space for Tanakhi and Lore just to run rampant. I don't know. And now it's even worse because Ramatra denies everything that Sigma wants to do. As, but not trying to early pick up on a grizzly somehow is where are you going, Amnesia? <laughs> I mean, they're obviously trying to set up for some sort of engage here. Glyscore now um, pop, um, now popped up the Nemesis form, trying to get all those punches onto the members of Amnesia. Dawes now using the Gravitic Flux with the lamp out of the picture, landing onto every single member in that small hallway. Tannic Fee will fall as well, and now all the Glyphus Grizzly is trying to run for their life with wings in tow as Amnesia get that bot in the opposite direction. Yeah, and then Amnesia, they're going to have a couple ultimates coming up, but MI7, they're going to have about four. They're going to have four ultimates coming up. Fly score, even though Vermatra did receive a nerf to his ultimate, well, not his ultimate, but like they increased the ultimate cost, so it takes a little bit longer to get your ultimate up, but it really should be a big deal as now Lore has the Avengers and has that overclock, and whoa, we're going in already, holy! Yeah, might have slid a little bit too far on the flip and slide into the bush. Got hit by a helix rocket from Brian there. So MI7 having to get that res back up onto Lord and the overclock now out of the equation. And now Amnesia see their time to pounce. The Mercy and the Sojourn in that small room. They have an opportunity, but meanwhile, MI7 taking the aggression in their own hands. Tanning being Glyscore, finding three picks of their own and continuing the momentum here for MI7 just pushing forward. They, they saw the open when, even though Amnesia thought they had an opening to kill, um, Lore and Grizzly. Uh, Daz was the only one who kind of, Daz went, but then I think Matson turned around to try to stop Glyscore and Tanixi, who were just barreling down on them. The Lone Court cuts off the rest of the team from going in there. Daz gets cut off. It was just a really great play from MI7, realizing that they're aggressing. We can just pin them in that room and they can't do anything. And now Glyscore has that annihilation to catch the entirety of MI7. Not MI7, uh, Amnesia, but Daz immediately taken down as. It comes back to the Sigma's just not good on this map, dude. You gotta realize that at some point. 
Yeah, definitely. It's not a good look here for Amnesia. The checkpoint is unlocked here for MI7, which means the good news is Amnesia have close response here for the beginning. They get the quick spawn. The bad news is, well, MI7 now have close response. So that means that they can re-engage faster here as they're still pushing that bot up through the streets of Coliseo. Lore in the top right, just trying to pepper down with support from Grizzly. Now the Annihilation comes out here from Glidescore to try and clean it up. But Grizzly and Lore out of the equation here. Transcended from Nock, keeping the rest of Amnesia alive. Wise Squirrel eventually get kicked out of the world by Nock. Just very funny. Zenyatta taking the violence to Ramatra, but at the end of the day, Amnesia finally clean up and they're sending that bot right back in the other direction. They're sending that bot right back in the other direction, but now, if this happens but it's reversed, I am going to throw my hands up. It, M MI7 have a really big lead. Amnesia have to come back from this, but Amnesia does have four ultimates in his bank. MI7 is going to have that overclock in the amplification matrix again. Hopefully Lore just does it in and dies, but uh, okay, Rocket dies is dead, never mind. I mean, you said Lore into dies. I mean, he inted, not died, and was able to get that kill on to the Baptiste as Tanikby gets yet another hammer kill. That is two, if you are counting in the chat. As now MI7 back in control, and they're starting to push right towards the spawn doors and MD go once more. I also want to mention that this is like probably the most fun of both I've ever seen a Mercy get as Grizzly just has a tendency to pull her pistol out and uh, just completely shut down whoever is low enough, but Fair Fuck comes up from Dawes. Three ultimates pop simultaneously as Amnesia are desperately trying to get this. No way Grizzly gets that resurrect off. Well, they did get the resurrect off, but it might not mean a lot here as the rest of the picks all going blue in the kill feed. Some reds sprinkled in here and there, but at the end of the day, Amnesia going to be able to take that bot back for their own. Brian and Rocket, the only casualties. Is Amnesia is going to try to find anything here with less than five minutes on the clock to try and get this lead for their own again. Less than five minutes on the clock in, MI7 are going to have three ultimates. Amnesia only have two, but they do have the support ultimates to work with, so... Uh, they have that amplification mixer to buy space. They have the transcendence to always push forward or deny. As uh, amplification mixer come out, comes out. Um, as Laura decides not to pop an overclock, as Bordaz is getting bullied in a corner right now. Like, somehow manages to escape, only to die to another railgun shot from Laura. Uh, this is looking dim for Amnesia. I just don't agree with the Sigma pick whatsoever, and Dawes just doesn't seem to realize that maybe he should switch to the Ramatra that he played on Antarctic, and it would be a lot better. Yeah, definitely. Right now, Amnesia is just looking for any sort of sustainability, and so far, they are finding nothing right now. It's starting to feel like that the foundation of this house is made of cardboard as Amnesia still trying to push forward. Meanwhile, MI7 just trying to continue to push that bot. Annihilation comes out here from Glyscore going right into the back line as Max and Rocket see the grave once again. Monarch does get picked out here, so MI7 only have one support, and that is Grizzly, who's just barely keeping themselves alive behind the barricade, but Laura still on a rampage, finds the headshot onto Nox here, and MI7 continuing his momentum. Matson walking out here on that soldier, but sees the rest of their team dying in front of him as that car, as that bot approaching the final checkpoint here to give the victory over to MI7. Brian will be able to unleash the Dragon Strike to try and separate some members of MI7 off of the robots, but right now it's looking grimmer and grimmer here for the side of, of Amnesia to get anything done here, Denji, but Brian able to get the kill on the Monarch means there is potential. There is potential. Monarch switched over to Lucio to come back, so they didn't really have that much support. As Matson, Matson is going on a complete spree, Glyscore finds one on the rocket, but whoo, that bot got so close to full capping as look at that, 17 meters to 138. This, this is very dangerous for Amnesia, who the problem is with Sigma again, he doesn't, he's not really good at pushing forward into what MI7 are running. He likes to poke, doesn't really hold space that well. He does, sure, Doss has like graffiti flux, but MI7, all they have to do is play uh, a push and pull game now. They have such a big lead that all they have to do is burn time with the clock in over time, win one last fight, and there's, this map is theirs. Unless, unless Amnesia pull MI7 and come back somehow from this deficit. There is potential. Matt's been able to get the kill onto Laura here, forces out the res here from Grizzlies. The overclock is top. Unable to get anything with the resulting ultimate. And Dawes also used a Gravitic Flux and wasn't able to find anything with that either. Now with Hanigby going to the back line with the Molten Core, trying to burn the members of Amnesia to the ground. Will find the kill on O'Brien, but not at the cost of his own DPS partner in lore. Still, however, the rest of MI7 cleaning up the pick. Dawes now out of the picture as Rocket is fending for their life right now against the Zordra and a Tanigby. 
Thanabe just pushing his bomb in the opposite direction. I don't think Amnesia realized this as they're, I think, still fighting with MI7 in the back line. Now get the Mercy pistol kill on the Grizzly, and so far MI7 continuing the advantage here as Amnesia. I mean, they have to try and reset and find another opportunity. Not to find another opportunity, but look at MI7. They're just not pushing the bot. They're fine with what they have. They know that Amnesia have to push the bot super far forward and uh, MSM just has to rotate ultimates and play correctly as again Sigma not great into this comp it's always I'm, I'm reiterating again and again it's like I'm a broken record about how that Sigma is here but it's just like the one piece of the comp that's just not going into place is not Daz on that Sigma if he was on, on an Arista or a Remakura I think this would be a lot closer so hard working is very good right now. Dog gets the kill on to Tanikvi to start off this engage here. The window invested from Rocket to help ensure of that elimination. Now Brian also getting the kill here on Alora. It means Amnesia finally have some momentum. Grizzly's able to get the res off, but so far Amnesia starting to push that bot for their own, but they only have 30 seconds left to try and make it 100 meters. Try and make it 100 meters. And look, MI7 are just stockpiling ultimates. They haven't popped a single. As a as the ball comes out now, the Annihilation comes up from Gliscore. This is this is MI7 to show it, saying we're done with nostalgia in all appearances. You guys made the mistake of running the stigma, but as uh, Tenexi has kidnapped the bot, is playing Grand Theft Auto. Right oh now. no! <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's the way to end it. That's the way to end it. The third hammer kill of the match, and MI7 <laughs> take the three to one victory over Amnesia in this matchup. And once again, they prove that they are better than the Nostalgia Org in the regular season. MI7 three to zero against the Nostalgia Org in the regular season. This was uh, a little bit of shenanigans that we witnessed here at the end, uh, Denji. But overall, I think MI7 just put out a statement today, getting rid of Amnesia this quickly. Yeah. I'm it all came down to MI7 played great, Amnesia played great, MI7 just, their teamwork was a lot better, their playmaking was a lot better, uh, but it all came down to the, if that Coliseo map, Dawes just was stubborn. Never switch off the Sigma. If it's what they practiced in scrims, it was worked, and that's what you run there. But you gotta realize, you gotta realize, you can only ram your head into a brick wall so many times before you die, and or lose. And that's exactly what Amnesia tried to do, and it did not work for them in the slightest bit. As Dawes may be a great Sigma player, but Sigma as a tank, Sigma as a tank, no matter who you put on the tank, is going to lose to, Brawl to a brawl comp. You, you could throw you could throw Void on Sigma, and he would just and probably switch to Armatra himself. That's where Sigma is right now against pretty much any brawl tank. He's good at he's good on long range poke maps, but he's not really good on uh, mid range brawl maps like Coliseo. Yeah, definitely. It did seem like that Amnesia might be tinkering a little too much with a little weird compositions and unfortunately didn't work out for them in this favor. But nonetheless, MI7 so far getting a good start to this season, trying to bring a championship to this org after two runner-up finishes in the Discord tier. But now with the score settled here, Denji, we have to choose ourselves a player of the match from the side of MI7. Now, I could be funny to choose Tannic D just because he was going for hammer kills, but... I'm going to choose Gliscor. Gliscor, time and time again, even though the kill field is getting lit up by Lauren Tank, the, he was the one making space, taking targets low, be, and his D.Va was just fun. Well, there were so many times where he saved Lore, saved Grizzlies, pretty much saved er his entire team with the defense matrix. His peel was amazing on the D.Va, and he's just a great tank in general. Um, I got the, the honor to play alongside him for a couple weeks when, uh, when I was ringing for Wildcat Boys last season, and even then, he's... Still been that great tank. He's pretty much like I want to call him the someone of tranquility because someone on the Flutter Mayhem pretty much plays everything, and so does Gliscor. Yeah, Gliscor definitely is a very flexible tank. I'm actually going to double down on that opinion because I think Gliscor had a very stellar uh, performance today coming into this team, replacing Genji Main, who many people thought was the definitive tank for MI7, and now showing that they are willing to live up to the same potential that Genji Main had, if not even more. I think Gliscor definitely better. is a strong pick here for the side of... Okay, Op opinions are opinions, but I do think Gliscor definitely is a strong <laughs> pick for this team. I think definitely MI7 are willing to work around Gliscor, and we'll have to see how it's going to adapt for the rest of this season. But that is it for today's broadcast. But it's not the end of Tranquility for this week. Make sure you tune in tomorrow as we have our first ever regular season match for the Ascendant tier, our brand new uncapped tier that we are debuting in season 11. And then on Thursday, we finish up the week with our Discord tier matches. 
And that is pretty much all we have here today for Denji, my amazing caster, Rhino, who's been our producer and, uh, and our observer today. Uh, I wish I could remember what their name was because I unfortunately... Little Joe, thank you for the producer, Rhino, for telling me. Make sure you thank all your producer and servers. They do all the backlifting. But for all of them and the rest of the Tranquility Gaming community, my name has been Balzi. Until we meet again, we hope you have an amazing night.